God's kids said? Amen. Amen. Well, in case you weren't on, are in here seated, but when Pastor Todd and Pastor Cap were up here, I'm not either of them. I am Pastor Todd's wife, Denise. So I'm excited to be here today to encourage moms and boys in the room. I'm sorry. But if you would with me cheer your wives, moms, sisters, aunts, grandmas on, that would be amazing. Are you with me, boys? All right, so I do this thing when I'm with the Agape girls. Literally, it's like torture being with the boys. Like the girls, they're resilient, they're fun, they're nice. And so I like have this thing with them where for some reason, when there's a platform, people start thinking that the people up here like walk around with halos and walk on clouds. So I do this thing called get real or it's for real. And so I'll just give you one piece of my week, little blips, like 12 seconds blips of the week so that you know humans on stage are the same as humans sitting down. And so this week, I wanna tell you, my husband always like, oh, my wife gets up at 3.45 a.m. She's so cool because she gets up and reads the word at three. Listen, this Wednesday, I woke up 3.45 3.45 a.m., went in my office, and I had a choice. There was the desk, and there was the cozy sleeper couch. <laughs> Guess which one I chose? Right there, I failed. It was the opportunity to get to know God and his word and hear from his spirit, or get cozy with my blanket and my coffee and fall right back asleep before prayer. <laughs> yep, she did it. So I have to make sure that you know when he's bragging on the time, those things happen too, just this week. Same day, a couple hours later, I wake back up, it's really late, and I'm supposed to get to prayer on time, and I'm supposed to be, you know, ready to roll, already in the word, so excited. And I'm walking out the door, getting my coffee, and you guys, does anybody in here know what collagen is? Putting it in the coffee? Does anybody know in here how sticky it is? It's like jello, you get it? It's from the joints. Like, she spills half the can on the floor. Then she goes to the sink to pick up the stuff to wipe it. And then my husband's making fun of me because I'm gonna vacuum it. He's like, you can't vacuum that. You gotta pick it up first. So there's that. Then I'm picking it up. And as I'm picking it up, it's so sticky. My feet are sticking. I go to get the the cleaner from under the sink. She picks up the cleaner. When I talk in the third person, that's the one I don't wanna be. She picks up the cleaner and she spills the cleaner (laughs) all over the other part of the floor. Not the part that needed to be cleaned. Still late for prayer, she gets there without her glasses, can't see the word. (laughs) And then I go to my friend's house, some of my best friends. One of them decides to make me dinner. And I'm running out the door to get here for a creative night. And she's like, here, take it to go. What a servant of the most high God. Can you give God praise for servants? So she, she's handing me the dinner, Joy, and as she does, I walk, I walk over to the kitchen and I start eating and I start literally choking to the point where I might die. I was like, what is happening? They're laughing at me. I am not breathing. I'm having a heart attack. And then for those of you that know mom of twins, I'm in the corner because something else might happen because I'm choking so bad. Just keeping it real, y'all. So part of why I love, though, to be able to share with you ladies today is because of what I didn't know and because of how I want to apologize. Gosh, I don't know if I'll get through it. I wish I would have known the role of a woman at a very young age and learned how to appropriate the power of God's Holy Spirit and walk in it. I wish that I would have known regularly how to to know that I was approved by God and not needing approval of boys at a young age. I wish I wouldn't have gotten, okay, so now it would be inspo from Insta for your closet. Probably back then it was some magazine, right? I don't know, whatever. Instead of finding my inspiration for what I should quote unquote wear from the world, I would have found it in 1 Peter 3 had I known. And there's a season of God just sanctifying my closet, just like he sanctifies our hearts. And still to this day, he's sanctifying my closet. And still to this day, sanctifying my heart. I wish I would have known what, you know, the world would say, be independent, go after it, you can do it. It doesn't matter, you're a girl, you can do it. I wish I would have known the difference between independence and pride, justifying the Jezebel spirit that I was in agreement with and walking out the curse of Eve joyfully and gleefully. Instead of confronting it head on, 
knowing that I can have all authority in Christ Jesus and walk in humility and express his love by the power of his spirit. I wish I would have known that it doesn't have to be about my performance. It's all about living and dwelling in his presence. And then um, this time together, I thought we could hop into Proverbs 31, a woman of valor, and it says, who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. So I see that scripture, and I remember my life, and I think, are you kidding me, God? There's surely someone else that could be doing this, right? And he's such a great reminder of, it's not about you. I'm gonna show you what it looks like for the rest of your days, how to pursue me to be a woman of valor. And this is so funny, I looked up this word. In the, the Hebrew, it talks about excellent and moral character. She understands and is strong in heart and mind. Isn't that interesting? It's not talking about she got all the jobs done, she finished the tasks, the to-dos, the driving back and forth. No, her character, developed by the Holy Spirit of God because he's such a good guide and teacher. As she yields, she learns how to have a strong mind and how to have a strong heart. And the Bible tells us the fruit of that Matthew 6, if we seek God first, what happens? The rest, he handles it, right? It's so cool. And then it says, her worth is far above rubies. I thought, interesting, I'm like, why is a ruby so special? It is one of the precious gems, but the coolest thing about a ruby that's unique to it is, though it may have flaws, because it's strong, on the Mohs scale or whatever it is, it's strong, it's beautiful, just like you. You're strong, yet beautiful. But even if it has flaws, it doesn't lose her, its value. And so I wanna say to you moms, you wives, you daughters in here, even when you have flaws, your value in God's eyes is exactly the same. On, it's priceless, yeah. it's priceless. And you know how you know that? Because of what Jesus did for you, right? He didn't... He, it's so cool, the, the woman who is a woman of valor, she's strong in heart and mind because she knows her value because she's met her Abba. She knows what Jesus has done for her. He came from divine glory in heaven, gave it all up, lived a perfect sinless life for you, died on the cross, and now, is willing to not only pay for the penalty of your sin, he says if you confess that he forgives and cleanses, but now he fills you with his Holy Spirit and you get to do this life by his power and not your own strength. Can you just say praise God for that? Because me, left in my own strength, I was a complete hot mess. You guys heard a couple of things and I, would, I don't have time to get into all of the things, but a hot mess. Every sin you can imagine, all 10 commandments broken before I was 21 years old. The weight of all that sin was beyond what I could ever carry. It just kept piling up. Didn't know what to do with the sin. But as I was willing to just see what God said, because there were so many amazing people in my life, all of you amazing people in somebody else's life, that kept knocking on my heart, kept inviting me in, I finally learned, oh my goodness, this God might have a plan for me even though I've broken every commandment including murder, every one of them. And so as I began to trust, I started to learn his voice. So a woman of valor, first point, she knows her value. Second point, she knows his voice. You know your value when Jesus literally paid by his own shed blood for you, and then distributes you these gifts. So you have the gift of eternal life, and now you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And not only that, you were bought at this high price, you have the best gift, Holy Spirit now, so that not only you have eternity, but he's gonna do life through you, right? You don't have to do life on your own. And now you might say, what do you mean she knows his voice? She's learned by getting with God, that he speaks through his word, that he speaks during worship, 
that he speaks when you surround yourself with other people. That's why we're so big on surrounding yourself here because as soon as you get with other believers that have had an experiential knowledge, we call it awaida in the, in the Hebrew and then gnosko in the Greek, when you have experiential knowledge of who God is and you rub shoulders with another believer, they might believe what you believe. And then they have experiential knowledge with God, they tell you about it and then you might believe what just happened to them? And your faith is increased. So not only from his word, not only while you're worshiping and praying, but then also when you're witnessing other people's lives and testifying because you're willing to surround yourself, you learn his voice. Always confirming it in the word. And finally, she knows her vocation. Today we won't have time to get, a, get to that, but at Agape next Monday night, the 22nd, I'd love to have you there. Like I, will go back through all of the third point. This is the deal. When I was growing in my you know, late teens, early 20s, didn't know any of this. My value was defined by the world around me and pursuing what the world said to pursue. What people said about me, believed it. What people thought about me, must be true. And it, instead of hearing his voice, I heard voices. They weren't his. Voices of man, probably voices of the enemy, and then self-condemning voices, right? Do you, anybody there, anybody in the house have a self-condemning voice on occasion? And then finally, vocation. I was looking for a job that made me feel good. Like 20 years, itching ears, like how's it gonna be? Like I, there was nothing in me asking the Lord, what's your call on my life? Had no idea I should be doing that, no clue. But praise God for Romans 8, 28, where he says he works all things together for the good of those that love him. So you might think, well, well, then how the heck are you here and why are you here? God gave me a 25-year journey, step by step. I love that, that song, the first song. You guys know that's upon, what is it called? Upon this rock. It's like literally it talks about brick by brick, right? Like step by step, strength by strength. You learn one thing at a time, it's a little deposit, you learn the next thing, another deposit, the next thing, another deposit, and before you know it, that thing you used to crave, it's gone. And that thing you used to do, no more, not even a desire for it, that place you used to go, you don't even think about it anymore. Because day by day, step by step, moment by moment, you're willing to implant the word of God in your heart and hear his voice and know what he has for you. This happened in the very beginning for me in Fort Lauderdale. Mind you, I was climbing the corporate ladder, I was working four jobs, I was doing massage therapy school, I had the goal of gonna own my own gym, gonna have my house by, and going to beat all these guys in the corporate world that I was already overseeing like 200 of them. And so in my mind, that was what I was supposed to be doing. And then I met this woman who was so kind to love me right where I was at not judge me, not be like, she's so prideful, she's so insecure, she's so understanding of the world and nothing to do with God. She could have had all the judgments, y'all. But she took a minute and another minute and another minute and was willing to go the length with me. And some of the things she said, Genesis 1, 26, 27. God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over, and paraphrasing, everything. So God created 27 human beings in his own image. He created them male. Say it with me. And he created them male and female. Genesis 2.18, I'm dropping down to a few more verses for time's sake. It says this. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a what, ladies? Ugh, uh, <laughs> That was my first response. Are you, fill in the blank, kidding me? <laughs> you think I'm built for a guy? Oh, honey, I'm sorry you think that. <laughs> God had a long, gracious road with me. Praise God for it. I will make him a helper comparable to him. I can't even... Read this without crying of his grace, his mercy in our lives. So Adam gave names to all the animals, but 
the end. For Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. 21, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took one of the man's ribs and cl- out of the man and closed up the opening. And God made a woman from the rib and brought her to the man. I'm gonna hop down to 23. It says, uh, at last the man exclaimed, this one is bone of my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother, is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Later on, part three at Agape, that will make sense. This is the deal. I had a three-wave response to when she was trying to teach me this. I was stunned and dumbfounded, then got super angry. One, I was angry because this can't be true, finally came to my senses, and then thought, how have I been duped? How have I been lied to for this long? How have I chased all these things that aren't even from you, God? Truly duped. It's the exact opposite of what God intended in the garden that we just read, that I was after. I learned later all of the things that I was after, triggered by my enemies, my own self, the world, the flesh, and the devil, your three enemies, my three enemies. And then you guys learn in John 10, 20, or John 10, 10, what does the enemy come to do? Make you happy? What does he come to do? Yeah, we don't know it. I didn't know it when I was seeking out after dealing with the spirit of rejection through adoption, a spirit of abandonment through adoption, and then neglect, and all these different things that I had gone through in my life, of course I was trying to fill them with everything, mainly boys, sex, drugs, all of the things. Find myself in an un, in sin, sex, uh, not married, unplanned pregnancy, another sin, abortion, and then the weight of that sin for so long just overwhelming and crushing. And it wasn't until somebody brought to light this team of people in my old church that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and you were fallen for it, every bit of it. I I love how God gives us so much grace because it says in, in 1 John, don't love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father isn't in him. And that's who I was. The love of the Father was nowhere near me. It was all about, right? And then it says, for all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh, have you struggled with that? The lust of the eyes, have you struggled with that? And the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. A woman of valor Strong in mind, strong in heart. She realizes the enemy's after her. She realizes his strategy. She realizes the tactics. And she girds herself with strength, Proverbs 31, 17 tells us. And strengthens her arms. Or another translation said she's a hard worker. <laughs> Proverbs 31, 25 says she's clothed with strength and dignity. And we found this same word in our reading this week. If you're reading with us in the daily reading, Proverbs 12, 4, it says, an excellent wife is a crown Capus mentioned this, of her husband. But she who causes him shame is like rottenness to the bones. The man who finds a wife finds a good thing. And so wives, moms in the room, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah? When I learned this, I was in shock. I thought, no way. I don't know if this faith is for me. I think I'm gonna go out the door. And then God, again, bit by bit, day by day, moment by moment, taught me one breath, another breath, one step, another step in him daily, surrounding me with people who loved him, women of valor who were after him, they too highly valued by God and their husbands. I was able to observe their character. I was able to watch the way they biblically parented their kids. I was able to watch the way they respected their husbands, not just with their mouth, but with their mind, their heart, and their language, and the side conversations with their friends. I was able to observe the most incredible miracle. This is a miracle, taking the flesh out of man, woman, and putting in, Ezekiel 36, 26 tells us this, 
God, O.C. mentions this last week, God takes out the stony, stubborn heart and he puts in a tender, responsive heart. So you guys, you hear that, what do you think? I have to take you all the way back, way, 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 way back to the Old Testament, Exodus 25. And it says that he will make a tabernacle so that he could dwell with his people, which foreshadows the temple of Solomon, which foreshadows you, who said yes to Jesus as Savior. You are a temple of the Most High God. And when you say yes to Jesus, he deposits his Holy Spirit in you. You are indwelt by God. Does, I mean, you guys should be jumping up and down. Do you understand that that's a miracle? When you say all you have to do is say yes, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I have done these things. I had to acknowledge my sin. Not just say, God, you're cool, you died on the cross. The true gospel is, I acknowledge my sin where I have fallen short and I praise you, Jesus, that you died to pay the penalty for my sin and I put my faith in that fact and now I get the gift of him, the third person in the triune Godhead, God the Holy Spirit, who will do the rest of your life through you if you say yeah. And this isn't just for girls, y'all. I'm just giving you a little hint. So now my stony, stubborn, selfish, ill-motivated, disgusting heart, gone. His new heart, James in the back. Can we give James in the back, who just did 85 slides for me, a round of applause? You don't even see him because he's in the back room, but I want to just, there's a temple, the first temple picture, if you could pull this up for me, James, that would be awesome. Okay, so here's the deal. This I think actually Adam made. I'll give you some props too, Adam. Thanks for all your hard work. Um, this is the deal. Can you guys see him? I, I'm, I know when they're worshiping, they're always blocking my view. So if I'm blocking your view, just give me a shout out. I'll move. Okay, let me go this way. Am I blocking your view? I need you to see this. So let's just say you're a temple of the most high God. This is the first example of this in the Old Testament. And I know this is like, we're gonna study the Bible. Are you ready? No, like you, you wanna know what you were made to be, right? Okay. So the outer course, if you see it, this square line on the outside represents the body, the flesh. All of this gray part represents the flesh. The inner courts, the more inner man, outer man, my actual physical body, inner court, inner man, my mind, my heart, right? Decisions, thoughts, act of the will here. So you'll notice where it says natural thoughts, natural emotions. Then you see these little like squares along the outside of the yellow. Do you see it? That's kirar in Hebrew and what that is Storerooms that the priests were actually supposed to store items to worship God. Instead, they had idols there. Which kind of is like me and all of the idolatry I just told you about. Stored in those little pockets of my heart that nobody knew about but God and me. Maybe some that I actually sinned with. But for the most part, it was just him and I. Right? But... When he took out my stony, stubborn heart and he gave me a tender, responsive heart and you the same, he imparted to us, do you see all the gold and all the yellow, which represents purity? All the outside, dark, dreary, bronze, judgment. The inside, purity. He gave us not only a new spirit, his Holy Spirit, but now a new heart. So I have the minds, the thoughts, and the decisions of God or of Jesus inside me, ready to be accessed. Is that so cool? Yes. Okay, and then if you look right here, here's the problem. We have free will. <sighs> so do you see where it says new willpower and underneath it, natural will? Both of those dots represent a column. Y'all see a column and you just think it's a brick and you walk by, right? Thank God for Nancy Missler who taught us this in this book, The Way of Agape. You guys need to check it out. But anyway, giving her props quick so she knows she's in heaven. Um, so the natural will, the two dots represent these two pillars. One is Jachin, that's a name. The other is Boaz, another name. The Jachin pillar represents by God's counsel. The Boaz pillar represents by God's strength. So by his counsel and by his strength, we can say no to our own flesh and we can say yes to a new willpower his. And so we have this daily grind. My will, his will. Who represented this the best 
in the Garden of Gethsemane. Can you even imagine? For you and for me, he said, if this cup, his flesh, if this cup, but not my will, thy will be done. And this is what happens. If you could go to the next slide, James, please. Here's what happens. All these little boxes on the outside carry our hurts, our resentment, our doubt, pride, bitterness, rejection, unforgiveness, fear, you name it. And we have a choice. We can agree with the things that have happened to us in the past or the enemy's tactics to grab on those heart strings. Remember this. They'll reject you just like you were rejected when you were born. Remember this, that guy who just slept with you because, you know, he wanted to satisfy himself and had no care in the world about who you are? You're not worth it. He rejected you too. Those are the enemy's tactics. He pulls on the heartstrings of the past. And then our own thoughts, our own desires, our own emotions come out. Can I give you a really simple, practical example of this? The flesh versus the spirit. I was getting ready for bed, and I was exhausted. And y'all, I told my husband not to share about this, but I'm gonna share about it. (sighs) (laughs) So, you guys know that silly fitness pal thing? You know what I'm talking about? Those of you that don't know, you count your macros in this silly app, and it's so annoying. Anyway, (laughs) this has been around for like 20 years. He's He's discovered it this week. And so he thinks he needs to know everything. And he's sitting over the bed. I'm sleeping like that moment of like, okay. I'm about to go out, you know, into the sleep. And he's like, how do I do? And he starts going off on. And he's asking me the question about my fitness pal. And my immediate response is like, I don't know. Literally out of the flesh bursts this reaction. "Ah," And he's just like, ah. (laughs) Like, ew, crown on my head. Yeah, right. And he walks away. And here's me. Can you go back to that picture, please, with the squiggle line? Here's me. See the squiggle line? The squiggle line represents me quenching the Holy Spirit. Instead of responding, oh, honey, let me wake up and help you. I can't wait. (laughs) She's like, I don't know. And just, so then I feel so convicted by God the Holy Spirit. Can you show us the third slide, please? He empowers me because he's bringing conviction by his counsel, Jacob, by his might, Boaz. He's giving me counsel. Now I choose, not my will, like Jesus, but thy will be done. And I go, he walks back in the room, and I'm like, I am so sorry for being so short. I'm exhausted, but that is no excuse. Will you please forgive me? And he's like, for sure, honey, I'm so sorry to bother you with it. I'm like, oh, no. And then you just start feeling worse and worse and worse as he's like saying sorry. (laughs) It's a choice every single moment of our lives to let God, the Holy Spirit, who lives in you, flow through you or let it be you. This is the cool thing. Jesus modeled it so amazingly. He came from heaven to earth, lived the sinless, perfect life, modeled every bit of how to do this in every facet of society so that we could see and know and hear how to do it with him. He's given us this new spirit, and now we have his heart, his thoughts, his desires, and now we have the will, supernatural will, by our choice to go in the opposite spirit. It's my choice and it's your choice all day, every day. I can operate, think about this, in the flesh of the spirit, slave woman, Hagar, free woman, Sarah. I can operate from promise, excuse me, or past the Kedar boxes outside the golden temple. From promise, the golden temple, golden inside, high place, holy place, holy of holies, or the outside, what I remember, what the enemy's speaking, I have a choice. I can agree with him or I can really believe God and know that as soon as I say, by your counsel and by your strength, as soon as I step forth or even just think, I want you, Lord, and not me, he empowers us to walk it out. Amen? Amen. Are you so glad that you have a well of promise to draw from now that you said yes to Jesus and not just the past experiences that you've had in life? Ladies, 
I think about this when we're parenting. I think about this as we're just, like I just expressed, being a wife, you know, the one that's the crown. He's so faithful in all the little things to continue. Then you might say, can you show me some more practical things? When fear is entering in my mind, I have a choice to believe. 2 Timothy 1.7 that says, what? I haven't given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Here's what's really cool about that. Power is literally dunamis, Holy Spirit. Love is literally agape, Jesus. I have given you power, I've given you Holy Spirit, I've given you love, Jesus, and I've given you a sound mind, and that unfortunately is where the choice happens between you and I, right? We get to have free will. So when fear comes, I have this song that I keep playing from Mercy Culture, you guys gotta grab it, it's just one little tag, and it says, fear go. Holy Spirit, fire, just keep saying, I wanna burn with you. Fear, go. And so this is what we get to do all day long. Instead of instilling fear in our kids and making them afraid of all of the chaos in the world right now, we ask God to give us his authority in every corner of the world that we will travel or our kids will travel. He is their authority and you train them in that and you speak that over them as they're going to bed. And you tell them how much authority they have, no matter what darkness looks like. Can you show us the flashlight temple again, please? The, t- the flashlight. They get to make the faith choice to not live in fear. They get to express God's love to a dark world. And they get, like you, mama, glorify. They get to glorify God no matter where they go. And so when you have had, <laughs> yeah, he's worth, he's worth clapping for. And then when you... Train your kid to be a warrior and not a worrier. They go everywhere knowing Jesus, Emmanuel, is God with me. He's not only with me like over here alongside my pal, he lives in me and if I say yes to him, he'll give me the way because he's the way maker, amen? So mamas, if you would, just search your heart, search your mind where there's anything that would go on that's not from the Lord. Think of this. Is it hard for you to look another woman in the eyes without being jealous or insecure? Can you look in the eyes of another woman and can you say, I am so for you, Maddie. I cannot believe what God has given you as a gift and I cheer you on and I can't wait to see you grow like crazy in who God designed you to be. As women, we get a choice. We can walk around comparing ourselves and then fall into the trap of insecurity, jealousy, judgment, and live that squiggle line temple Or we can walk around loving every woman we see, knowing God's empowered us to be each other's sisters, to encourage one another, and to be so thankful. Thank you for modeling it through these women before me. A woman of valor, she knows her value. A woman of valor, she knows God's voice. And a woman of valor, she knows her vocation, and it is to be the temple of the Most High God, to receive from him who he is, to exchange her sin, insecurity, jealousy, fear, anger, judgment, all the things, and give it to God so that then he can pour it through you. Are you with me? Should we pray? Could you stand up with me and we'll pray? Are you ready to go? Maybe for some in here, this is, if you could just be in a prayerful state right now, and and this is what I wanna challenge, this is, I can say this because I'm not the pastor, so on behalf of the pastor, can we just give God praise for your pastor? I just wanna honor your pastor, but also our executive pastor, can you give God praise for him? For our online pastor? I just wanna say thank God for leaders of the house that love him so much and they're so willing. And I can say this, in this time during an altar call, this is where we're, we're literally weighing the balance. Yep. This is where souls are at stake. So when we're moving around and we start talking, as a mom, I'm gonna share with you what that does. It distracts people from knowing the heart of their father. And so if you would, as believers of Jesus, in this moment, not when I'm here, but when all the boys are up here, sharing their heart and expressing the gospel, would you fight in war, in prayer, for the people next to you to know Jesus and have this experience with him? 
Pray for, even if it's, you don't know anybody in the room, pray for people you know that don't know him. And if you come and there's nobody that ever comes to the altar, just humbly ask Jesus, did I invite somebody this week? Right, it's not the pastor's job to go invite every person that doesn't know him, that's why we're all here. So I just wanna challenge us, if we could humbly walk together as the bride of Christ, you're called to be the bride. That means your urgency is so that souls would know Jesus. Your urgency is so that people would know. And I just wanna charge every mom in this room, you are a woman of valor. God has given you a strong mind and a strong heart. You know his voice. If you've said yes to Jesus and you're intimate with him, he has so much for you. If you would just bow your heads with me. God, we come to you in thanksgiving that not only did you send your son from perfect holy heaven to be the propitiation it's crazy for me to say that word because it's like, what I owed you paid. What I owed you paid. And if you would just softly say that underneath your breath, just say, what I owed you paid. Thank you, God. He lived this perfect sinless life and said yes to the cross so that we can have access not just for eternity to have a home, but so that we can access his dunamis power now and live and express his agape love, cheering one another on. And moms, if you, everybody's heads are bowed and eyes closed, and moms, if you just know, I know God is challenging me to grow in deep intimacy with him. First of all, I wanna cheer you on for saying yes, but I also wanna say, he is enough for you. Wherever you feel like you lack, he wants to meet you here. Jehovah Elohim means I am the becoming one. That's his name, and that means I will become what you need. I am the becoming one. So moms, he has what you need. And so if that's you and you know, I need the strength of God to live this life out. If you would just raise your hand, that would be amazing. And we wanna pray for you moms. Raise your hand if you know. I want your strength, Lord. Thank you. Father, we come to you thankful that in our own strength, and we're just humbly submitting to you. All the times that I've failed, I wanna just confess it. And we just say, it doesn't matter if you're just getting to know God, or if you've walked with him for 50 years, it's a struggle daily. And so God, we just say, we're yours and we want you to move through us. As a daughter of the most high God, as maybe a mom and maybe a wife, God, would you empower us to do the great exchange, to give us what we would conjure up in our own strength and to take what you give freely, the gift of your Holy Spirit that empowers us and helps us to love people right where we're at. And then with every eye, close, I just want to um, just invite, if nobody in this room has ever said yes to Jesus for a first time, you're like, this is all foreign. Where did I enter? I can't believe what has happened. What are you talking about? I just want to say God absolutely adores you. I want to let you know that God has an amazing plan for your life. And not only like we talked about, did he send Jesus to die for you, but he says as you say yes to him, it's as simple as faith. As you say yes to him, that's it. That's all you have to do, that's it. When you say yes, he fills you to overflowing with his spirit. And so God, we wanna just say thank you that you make yourself available. And again, if that's you, if you